Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and I'm getting ready to go out in the radiation tomorrow. Yes, I'm Johnny Engineer, and if I don't get elected Prime Minister of Canada next month, you're probably going to die a lot sooner than you expect. The radiation's here. If you don't protect and take cover, you're in big trouble. So that's why I'm running for Prime Minister. I'm going to create paychecks through the Bank of Canada by abolishing interest rates, reprogramming the bank's computer to create jobs for everyone to save us from the radioactive holocaust that's coming by mass producing marijuana to make it available free to everybody because marijuana kills cancer at the cellular level. Go see my videos on how marijuana kills cancer. I'm not going to go into that. Do your research. If you don't, you deserve to die. So, recent news. My last video, Big Lie of Low Level Radiation, is really hot. 900 views, which is like a lot more than I ever got a video of mine before. So much so, Google contacted me and said they'd give me money if they could put ads in front of it running at the bottom of it. So, sure, go ahead. If you think it's going to go viral, I hope so, because as people start to die, they're going to want to know why, and they're going to find out that my video explains how radiation damage is not linear, it's exponential. So whatever you think it's doing to you, square it. If it's 10 times more deadly, it's really 100. If it's 1,000 times more deadly, it's really a million. So it's exponential danger, and if you don't take it seriously, well, you deserve to die. That's the motto of my campaign this time around. I'm in the Guinness Book of Records for running in more elections than anyone else. This is my 75th, never been elected. Why well, elect a scientist when you can have a lawyer? And, of course, now, if I don't get elected, you're going to end up with the same clowns who are doing this to you. Recent article. Canada tries to outstupid the USA. And what's that all about? Well... As the radiation levels down in San Francisco were reported at 180 times over the safety limit, in Vancouver, do you think they warned the pregnant women, get out of the rain, take cover? Nah, they turned off their fallout detectors. There it is. Ah, the fascination of watching this tragic comedy of errors unfold in the U.S. government almost cannot be exceeded. But Canada is sure trying. Its own nuclear monitoring network has simply been shut off. And its website now reads, and there is the page from its website, where the last entry is on, the last three entries are March 25th. And they say, please note that as of March 25th, the frequency of data collection has been decreased due to the low levels of radiation being detected. And on that note, they'd also like you to turn off your smoke alarms because they ain't had too many fires. Well, do you believe this kind of stupidity coming from your government? Turn off your smoke alarms because there ain't been many fires. Turn off the fallout detectors because we ha haven't seen much fallout yet. When just down south, it's 180 times the limit. Well, either this really stupid excuse is stupidity or maybe they blew out their radiation detectors. One of the... Uh, now... If the radiation detectors had been blown out, you think they'd tell you or would they lie? Because telling you might cause a panic. And they can say, oh, a panic would be bad, therefore to protect the people. We'll lie to them, like we always lie to them when there's huge danger. After Chernobyl, million people died. They said, don't worry, low level, not to worry about. Million people died. And this is multiple times more deadly and worse a catastrophe we've had in Japan. So, Canada tries to outstupid the USA and does. By the way, France detects radioactive iodine in their rainwater and milk, and we're between Japan and France. Finally, Canadian government refuses to test for radiation in milk, claiming it's not necessary. The lawyers at work, what do they do when they see a threat coming? Hey, get rid of the evidence so nobody can sue us. And cover up California, Northwest BC, Canada, under radiation as high as Japan. Whoa! And it says scientist Lauren Moret has stated the effects are being intentionally covered up by Barack Obama's administration and Harper's in Canada. 
Radiation maps produced in Norway now confirm the western part of Canada are under a radiation threat with radiation levels as high as that in Japan in areas adjacent to the six units of the Fukushima nuclear power plant that started the meltdown in March 11, 2011. So, for another one, clearly we are witnessing one of the greatest disasters in modern time. And Areva, executive vice president, and it is. It's probably the biggest disaster mankind has ever had. A tsunami a couple of years ago killed a quarter million people. Chernobyl killed a million, they're admitting now. And this is going to kill millions and millions more. Oh, who can blame that cancer on radiation? Could have been something else, the lawyers will say. And finally, they're even making fun. Here's, here's President Obama and... He's wearing a uh, radiation suit in this story where he's saying that do not expect harmful levels of radiation to reach the U.S. Now, it's a joke. He's not really wearing the radiation suit, but it's a cute little video. You know how they're making fun of him downgrading the threat. Uh, finally, TEPCO entertaining no hopes of quick fix. So, yeah, there are no hopes. The radiation levels are way too high for workers to get close to the reactors. And it'll certainly take a very long time to inspect the condition of the damaged reactors. So no fixing it in a long time. Well, now we've got Ontario Power Generation. And they're the guys responsible for storing our fuel rods. And they say not to worry about it. Well, our fuel rods are stored right on Lake Ontario, at Darlington, and Pickering. And if ever we lose our cooling, they explode. And all we got to do is cool them for the rest of our lives. Now, we've got to decommission nuclear, and I'm the engineer who's going to come up with the funding to do that. But in the meantime, people laugh at me when I tell them, oh, we got to legalize marijuana because marijuana kills cancer. Well, here it is from an article, April 17, 2007. Marijuana cuts lung cancer tumor growth. And another one just recently about a little kid, um, February 22nd this year, two-year-old uses medical marijuana for his tumor. Well, we have to legalize marijuana, mass produce it, and provide it for free to the people if we want to avoid this incredible catastrophe. Other things I use, I've mentioned in other videos. I'm just saying that that is the number one that we're going to have to do. And that means that's going to take political power. And that means that's why I'm running for prime minister. I hope to be able to nominate a slate of independent candidates and small party candidates across the country for you to vote for before election day next month so that you got guys going in there promising to let me reprogram the Bank of Canada's computer to give everybody interest-free loans, put everybody back to work. Hey, how many times you seen Mr. Spock fix a whole planet by fixing one malfunctioning computer? Well, I can do it too if you let me into the Bank of Canada's computer. So, and finance the delivery of free marijuana to everybody. And right now, because marijuana works at the cellular level, and I've explained the exponential effect of these little nuclear particles blowing away pieces of our DNA code, which might hit a stop switch and turn it into a tumor that won't die. Then it replicates to another cell that won't die. And in 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, next thing you know, you got an exponential tumor growth. So marijuana kills them at the cellular level. Other things, too, go into my older videos. But Google has just offered to pay me money to put an ad on my big lie of low-level radiation. I guess they expect it to go viral. I sure hope so, because if it doesn't go viral, if you don't start telling your friends and warning, warning your family, get out of the rain, get out of the outside world if you can, stay indoors for the next couple of years while it's still smoldering and burning radioactivity off in Japan before it gets to France and lands on us too, we have to take it seriously. And the only way that we're going to survive this and maximize the odds of survival is for me to get elected. You can, this is a job for a lawyer. It's not. It's a job for an engineer. And I'm admitting that we're going to have to legalize marijuana in order to kill all the cancers we're going to get. I And old people are going to be dying more. And young kids are going to be dying more. And birth defects. And horror's coming. 
This is a catastrophe we've never seen before. It's the worst catastrophe in human history. And if we don't take action right now, in the next four weeks, to get Johnny Engineer elected Prime Minister of Canada and then Prime Minister of the Planet next, then you deserve to die. And that's the motto of my campaign. If you don't take this nuclear radioactive threat seriously, the exponential damage as the radiation gets into you, well, you deserve to die. So on that note, I'm going to get back to going out there and getting my signature so I can get registered in this election tomorrow and then come back and tell you that you now have your shot at a scientist getting into power who's going to fix the system as best we can. A lot of us are still going to die. It's too late now. The poison's already out there. I'm going out with a mask tomorrow. I'm not trusting my government when they turned off their radiation detectors to say that there's no danger. These are lawyers. These are liars. These are guys who know, well, they're used to lying to you, okay? And this is just more of it. So on that note, I hope you get out there and you take it seriously and warn your friends and you make the big lie of low-level radiation go viral. Otherwise, you deserve to die. So sure, there may only be one particle or two particles or three particles out there in the cubic meter of air I'm going to be breathing in every few minutes tomorrow, but I'm going to make sure that I'm going to get the least possible nuclear radioactive contaminants getting into me. So I am going to wear this when I go outside. And I hope other people start too.